Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Pump. In the first half of this episode, we talk about the importance of rest periods and why ignoring them may be hurting your gains as well as other topics. In the second half of the show, we coach four live callers on questions such as, can massage therapy benefit my workouts? I'm making great progress in the gym, but is there any way to make it faster? Why are there no rows programmed into phase one of MAPS Anabolic? And I want to be strong and have endurance, how can I train for both? One more thing, we have just hit 20,000 subscribers on our Mind Pump Clips YouTube channel. Our next goal, 30,000. If you haven't already subscribed, help us get there. All right, enjoy the show. All right, let's talk about one of the most underrated factors uh, when it comes to workout programming, rest periods. In fact, what makes lifting weights strength training versus just cardio is the rest period. If you did a bunch of exercises with no rest period, even if it was bench press, deadlift, squats, overhead presses, but you didn't have rest periods, it's no it's longer cardio, no longer strength training. It's the rest periods that make the strength training build muscle, just like the weights part. Right. What's what? What's your guess on the percentage of people working out in your commercial gyms that don't utilize this? Oh, ooh, sixty percent. Yeah. Oh, I. Say I mean, it's high. high. I say it's, higher. Well, it's less now. I don't know, man. Cause I, where I, I, work think out now, I, I actually, haven't been in a while, though, so I don't know. I think it's way higher. I mean, back in the day, it was. You go right now to a commercial gym. Yeah, and I I would say, believe it or not, the people strength training in there do pretty good rest periods. Like, they mm, actually take mm. rest. Uh, yeah, but that's not what I mean. It, I mean, and you could always tell somebody who is actually paying attention to this because they either got a stopwatch or they're looking up at the clock. Everybody else finds a rest period that they like and they feel comfortable, including ourselves. Oh, they never modify it, you mean. Are or, guilty yeah, of this. Yeah. Is you you find a rest period that works for your way of training, whether that uh, be for strength mm -hmm. or hypertrophy or circuitry, whatever yeah. it is. And then that becomes your kind of set rest period. Mm -hmm. And you take the same amount of time in the gym, you get about the same amount of exercises done, your rest periods look exactly the same, and they've yep. been exactly the same for months and potentially years. I would say 90 plus percent of the, the because this was used to be one of my favorite yeah. ways to change it up for somebody who's who I would get that would hire me that had been training consistently for a I, long time. I agree with you. I, 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 I would say majority of people don't know how to manipulate rest periods, yeah. 100%. But they do take, a lot of people do take a rest period, but it's either they take no rest period or in between sets they're on their phone. Used to be used to be newspapers. I used to. Be, I remember people used to be on the newspaper <laughs> oh, yeah. in between sets, especially the pec deck. There's yeah, always like some old guy reading up Dude. on uh, yeah world events. It's like, what are you doing? No, but you, you. So generally speaking, for strength training, your rest period should be between thirty seconds on the on the low end to as long as like four minutes on the high yeah. end, and that's the range. And then you can you can play within those ranges to give your body novel stimulus. But you know, it's funny you're mentioning people who who don't do that. It's so funny. So yesterday I went to the movies with my kids and believe me, there's a point to this. So we go to the movies. There's this kid uh, working the desk. He He's friends with my son. He goes to school with him. So he's like, hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on? Whatever. They talk for a second. We go to the movie. And then I asked my son, I said, is he a wrestler? And he goes, how did you know? And so I could tell by his posture and the way he's holding himself. Cauliflower and ears. He didn't have cauliflower ear, okay. but I said, I could tell by the way standing. And my son goes, can you tell often? It, like what kind of sport or something? I said, not always. I said, but sometimes it's obvious. And it just made me think of this conversation. There's this woman who works out and I'll paint the picture for you. Okay. She's got probably, she's got some like kind of stubborn body fat. You could tell it's stubborn because she works her ass off. So I'd say maybe 15 pounds or so that's kind of stuck to her body. She's, uh, works out very, very vigorously, dark circles under the eyes. She does an exercise to an exercise to an exercise to jumping jacks or treadmill and I see her in there when I work out all the time. And she's got that look on her face. You know that look where you could tell they're drained but stimulated? Mm. I mean, how often did you guys see this in gyms with people where all they would have to do is slow their workout down, take rest periods, get stronger, and they would get the, the fat would come off. And they wouldn't look like they're just running off of caffeine and, and stimulants. They would look like they're healthy. And I could tell. I watched her. I, I saw her walk in. And I'm like... I know she's going to work out. And sure enough, that's what she does with her workouts. Well, right? for the point you're trying to make, I think the, the same case or argument can be made about the other side, too, of the, the, the power lifter guy who goes in there and puts chalk on his hands for every five, you know, for five minutes before he gets in and does the next set. And he's been lifting that way forever. 
I, the, a great advice to add to this tip would be if you have, if you're in a plateau, here's a great way to bust your plateau. Don't change anything yet. Grab a stopwatch, do your normal flow of your workout and just pay attention to what you've naturally kind of gravitated towards as far as rest periods and then go to the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you're the, the, the lady you're giving an example of, and she's like, Oh my God, I never rest longer than 15 to 30 seconds. Yeah, she's yeah. like super. Then the next time you train or the next training block, let's say for the next month, train with rest periods that are three minutes long and try and challenge yourself by adding more weight to the bar every set. If you're the opposite, you're the power lifter guy or the, the the young kid who likes to rest forever in between or text for three minutes in between, mm-hmm. yeah. go the opposite direction and go short 30 second rest periods for the next four weeks. Those two people that are in plateaus that, that do that will see a, a huge difference just from doing just gotta that. It's got to interrupt the patterns. Mm-hmm. I think we just are all fall susceptible to that. And it's just one of those things you don't even recognize it. It's the same thing with like even tempo too. Like we'll recognize in the gym somebody that actually is being really intentional about yeah. uh, a negative uh, portion of the rep or like holding it and uh, being super controlled and dialed in. That's always impressed me because it's, it takes that, that added bit of intuitive focus where they're like, uh, you know, intentional focus, I should say, where they're actually like, you know, taking that on because otherwise we're just going to do what feels like you always do because it's just yep. you know, I'm going to gravitate towards what I want to do and what I, I feel like doing, which is not always best for you. Now the stopwatch is important because uh, you guessing that you're yeah. changing your no, rest period no, no, almost no. never works. No, and it's just like diet stuff when you think you yeah, yeah no track for a little bit uh-huh. first and you and and it's a it's a very different workout in the sense that it's a different focus, it's a different intent. The weight that you select is going to be very different. Like if I'm resting three minutes versus thirty seconds. The weight on the bar is way different. Like it's like 50% lighter or less. In fact, my goal when I'm doing short rest periods is to go as light as I can and still make it feel like I'm going heavy. When I'm resting long, now I'm trying to challenge myself with the weight that I'm lifting. So what am I saying here? The challenge with this is the mental piece. Yeah. Because we all have a tendency to train in a particular way. And when you change rest, rest periods for some reason is the hardest thing for people to stick to Mm. when they make a change exercises. I could get people to change, you know, rep ranges can be challenging too, but rest periods are really hard. Like you take the person who hates resting in between sets. The person is like, what do I do now? You know, while while in between sets, you take that person, have them rest three minutes. It's torture. Or you take the person who rests three minutes and you make them do 30 seconds. It's torture. So you got to have that stopwatch. Otherwise it's, it's not going to happen. It's got to be a momentum thing, right? Like for people that don't like resting, it's just like, I have to just like stay busy and just keep doing something. Otherwise I feel like I'm not working. It, yeah, it's crazy. Totally. Today's workout program giveaway, Maps Strong. This is a strongman inspired workout program, and you can win it for free. Here's how you enter to win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on notifications. If you do all those and we declare you the winner, we will let you know in the comment section. And boom, you won Map Strong. Uh, also, we got a sale going on this month. We took all of our best at-home workout programs, MAPS Anywhere, MAPS Suspension, MAPS Prime, and the No BS Six-Pack Formula. We put them in a bundle called the At-Home Holiday Bundle, and we discounted the crap out of it. So normally, if you did all those programs, they would retail for over $330. But right now, with this bundle, $99.99, and you get all those programs only in this bundle, only for this month. So if you're interested, I want you to click on the link at the top of the description below to get yourself set up. All right, here comes the show. Anyway, speaking of movies, I went to the movie yesterday. Um, oh, you did? Yeah, I went to the movies yesterday. I sent you guys a picture of the craziest. Oh, you didn't really go see that movie, did you? No. Oh, <laughs> I was like, did you really? Bro, you yeah, the, you I was said, about to say, you have the worst <laughs> taste no, of movies no, 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 if you no, no. insult Dude, I'll give cocaine you bear. But hold on, but hold on. But for real, <laughs> I'll watch bear. it. I'll watch it when it's out, like on <laughs> you TV. You will watch it. Just to see what's going on. Okay, so here's a, okay. It's so, like Sharknado. It's going to be in the bro. same class, I thought it was right? a joke. I no, it was a it's joke real. When you so we went, I went and watched Black Panther, the second Black Panther. Actually, pretty good. How was it? Really? Pretty really good. Like, it, was, wah, wah. it was all right. It uh, was all right. Yeah, was, I'm gonna you know, check that out. Almost three hours long. It was. It was pretty good. It wasn't. I wouldn't say it's bad. I wouldn't say it's great. It was all right. Um, but I'm walking through and they have the posters of different movies, <clears throat> and my daughter goes, "What?" And I look up and the movie. There's a m- big poster and there's a movie coming out called Cocaine Bear. <laughs> now this is not about 
a drug dealer whose nickname is Cocaine I bet Bear. it's like an, it's probably like a town called Cocaine or something. It's not no. even like it's, it's on the Discovery the Channel. It's like a real. It, okay, well, hold on a second. It's going to get worse. It didn't appeal to it's me. It's going to get worse. I look at the, I looked at the poster and I'm like, and it's a, it's a bear. Yeah. It's literally a grizzly bear with like cocaine on his snout. <laughs> so I'm like, what? And then I look at it and it says based on true events. So I'm like, okay. What? Okay, on. no. So I went on, I watched the trailer. I'm like, this has to be like something that's weird or whatever, or maybe it's comedy. No, no, no. It's a bear. That really happened? That there's, I guess, drug dealers lost like a bunch of kilos of cocaine in the woods. I guess it fell out of a plant. I don't know. It's, no it lost way. It. And the bear got into the cocaine. And in the movie, the cocaine's, cr- the, the bear's crazy. Like there's clips on the trailer where the bear's like chasing a car. It's like hella fast. <laughs> this bear's crazy. What, did he, what got into it? <laughs> <laughs> What? And it's a grizzly bear. Just terrifying. What's, terrifying. Yeah. What's the name of the guy? What's the name of the... Well, oh, that was money, not cocaine that fell out of the plane. What was the name of that? The the, the famous person that would never got no, caught? Oh, God. It it's was like money. initials. It's like initials. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, D.B. Cooper. Cooper. Yes, D.B. Cooper. That was, that was money, not cocaine. So I looked it up. Okay, there really was a grizzly bear Dude, that ate a bunch of cocaine. What once. like I like what does that do to the bear? Like, well, he ended yeah, up writing but, up a bunch. Yeah. Of, he wrote he wrote up a bunch of business plans. No, I, <laughs> he, he got all his hey, he got his, all his food for the next four winters. <laughs> Yeah. That, that's no. he's, he's stocked up. Dude. No. They were <laughs> killed a bunch of hookers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 had a, he hung out with Dan yeah. Arian. Yeah. No, it was, <laughs> that's what I told my my kids and I were laughing. You know, and, and my son, my son's wow. like, he's like, oh shit, look at that bear. Oh, he wants to start a business with me. All of a sudden, what's going on here? Oh my god, <laughs> that bear's on cocaine. It was. It's now he lives in my. Would you take your two oldest? Yeah, you want? Old. Yeah, so so uh, along those lines, so. I took the two old because I never really hang out just with the two of them. So um, Jessica stayed behind with the two babies, right? And so I'm off with the two older ones. And it was a long movie. It's a two and a, almost three hour movie. We're out for a while. Then I drove uh, to some other neighborhoods because I was looking at, you know, potentially moving or whatever. So it was like half of the day, right? So I come home and I saw the most attractive thing ever. And I think you guys can relate. You know, I know Adam, you've talked about this before. I come home and my wife is... She's got the baby, right? So she's kind of, she's outside. She's nursing the baby with one hand like this, holding an umbrella with the other one, while my two-year-old has got rain boots on and is like stomping around getting wet. Yeah. I'm looking at her. I'm like, that is the hottest mom of all time. <laughs> yeah. So she, and so I walk up Such to a her. category. I walk yeah, up yeah. to her and I, I whisper in her ear. I'm like, oh, you're going to get it later or whatever. She's like, what? <laughs> she's like, I haven't showered. Yeah. I'm all out of shape because I just had a baby. What's wrong with you? I'm like, this is the, I've never yeah. seen you so attractive in my yeah, life. You're like right. handling all these kids yeah. and just yeah. doing all this stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, so. I get it though. Yeah. There's just those moments you're like, yeah, dude, that's my girl. Totally. Yeah. hundred percent. Well, I, I, I was going to tell Adam this morning that um, like I had the most epic sex uh, the other night and really like it's not it's not my other move right the one i told you guys about the, the tool the belt no tools shirt, yeah the, yeah oh we're you- fixing stuff and you know just <laughs> that's you know, exactly he said he told like, me he had incredible sex i'm like oh would you fix the house <laughs> <laughs> he's like no bro i got a, i got another one no no it's it's definitely so i i do tell throughout the book and decided to kind of concede so there was um i uh, so i can't stand like these old stuffy english <laughs> movies and tv shows and, and you know stuff like that that's yeah. like very like blah, 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 like very <laughs> proper and, and they, they drink tea and they, they talk about stupid stuff so she had one of these movies Whoa, on that definitely describes every english movie. it's every single one i've seen it's like the royal tannin whatever yeah. whoever i don't give a shit you know whatever just dialogue the yeah whole time. just dialogue and uh so that was on tv and i was just got done putting the she likes those movies sleep. she loves it yeah and ne- can never watch it because i'm just like and she always says like oh we're always watching the action bang bang shoot stuff and i'm like that's not true it's usually comedy and it's like uh you know shows sci-fi whatever anyways it was on I, I get out and she's watching it and she's like you know what can i have a, a few more minutes watch my like, sure and then I see like a little bit of like, you know, making out, whatever. And, and it got like kind of steamy and I'm like, okay, yeah, leave that on. That's, that's yeah. Let's, let's check this out. I'm going to let you watch this. It's great. And it, it turns out like, it was like straight up, uh, like, uh, old English porn or something. Well, I mean, like, 
Yeah, what's up? Yeah, some show on Netflix. I'm like, what is this rated? Like, it was interesting. It was like somebody's lover or something. Anyways, <laughs> it was like a straight up romance. Do you remember novel. the name of the movie? Dude? I don't care. What, yeah, I don't even care what the name of it was. But he it's didn't on make Netflix. it all. He's like, but we're watching every season now. <laughs> <laughs> it was so epic and like, uh, yeah. Anyway, so apparently that really, you know, so you put on a cravat. Gets tingly <laughs> gone for her and things, and and so I'm like, well, I've been missing out this whole time. Like. I guess that's why, like, you know, because I used to make fun of my dad all the time for watching those stupid shows. And now like, you know I why. I get it. <laughs> yeah. I get it, Pops, you know, <laughs> you know, to each his own. Do you guys hear? I think I told you guys, uh, I might have talked about on the show about that guy that hired, he he paid somebody to mug oh, yeah. his girlfriend and so he could save his girlfriend, so he could, like, show up, beat the it's guy brilliant. up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. It's it, brilliant. Yeah, it totally worked. I'm like, until it doesn't work. Like, if you try to get mugged for reals one time, my boyfriend's going to kick. Oh, no, no, honey, we're going to leave this time. I don't wanna, <laughs> we should probably walk away. You know, I watched last night. I think I heard you say something to Doug about it. I didn't even know it was out. Was um, uh, the, What's his face's stand-up? Sebastian's? Oh, I that watched was, half of it. It was, was really, really good. It was really good. I only watched half. Oh, you only got halfway? Through. Have you watched it yet? No. Oh, you? It. Yeah, I did. Oh, it was good. Yeah, he's I liked got, it. He's he's gotten really good. He he and, he and he did a good job of touching some third rail topic. I mean, I love to see this this kind of uh, the the pendulum swinging back in the comedy sphere, right? I feel like these comedians have like are finally like okay, enough is enough. We're we're becoming so overly sensitive. Stand up comedians, they're trying to ca cancel comedians yeah. and stuff like that, like the Dave Chappelle. So. Every one of them, I feel like I've watched recently, make sure to like touch the third rails a little bit. And he did it. I thought he did a really good job of like, whenever he talks that. about his family and his dad, I crack up because I think of you guys. Yeah. Cause he's a, you know, yeah, cause yeah. they're Italian. Yeah. Yeah. And he go, and when he was talking about the time, he's like, I can tell, I can just see the way you move that you're not from, you're not American. He, and he talks about his dad. He goes, the way he moves. He's like, those are not American <laughs> moves. And he's like, you know, mimicking his dad. I'm laughing because I'm like, Katrina oh, yeah, was so. cracking up. She's like, oh my God, I could, this is going to be you. I could tell this is going to be you. You when we get older <laughs> so that she goes, he's an older dad right and so she he like oh, does, yeah, yeah, he yeah. does this whole thing of like oh, oh when he talks about taking his kid to school and stuff like that yeah. and the whole time she's like oh my god this is no like i so like the part jessica laughed a little too hard at this part some you know you ever watch your wife laugh a little too hard and you're like wait a minute mm -hmm. he's like yeah he's like I'm, he's like i'm 49 years old i got a five-year-old and a three-year-old he goes so i play a lot of times laying down on the ground because I just lay down on the ground <laughs> and Jessica's like, ha, 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 ha. And I'm like, wait a minute. That's how I play with the kids. It's easier. <laughs> I'm tired. Hey, just jump on me, kids. Oh, I have so, to, dude, I found it. It's Lady Chantrelay's lover. There you go. Lit, for all wow, you, wow. You dudes out you there that the, uh, would never into, watch that normally, I highly suggest She's into it. that stuff, huh? Yeah. I, I, I did. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't. It's the thing is like it's it's I think I've suppressed it so much for her that she doesn't admit that she likes it. You know, it's almost like so I can't watch stand up comedy anymore either because she's like, no, like because I think I've overdone it. Uh, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Where, yeah. So I have to like, again, we're talking to the to the fitness tip. You got to interrupt the patterns. So, yeah, yeah. That's, you know, <laughs> so that's what are OK? So what's everybody's show or t types of stuff that the wives watch that you don't watch and then that you watch and she doesn't watch? So. Jessica doesn't watch a lot of TV, but if there is one show she'll watch that I just will like, oh God, it's uh, she likes watching the Kardashians. Oh, she watches that. She watches no. the Kardashians. What? She does. No way. It's I didn't her, know we had anybody in our circle it's her that watches trash. Watching. Like she calls uh, okay. it her trash TV or whatever. Yeah. But then she's yeah. also like, you know, but they're great business people. I'm like, okay, no. whatever. <laughs> yeah. So she likes the Kardashians. She'll watch all the seasons of that or whatever. Um, and then for me, I can never put anything sci-fi on ever. Nothing. Sometimes I'll try and trick her. Like, oh, this is a really good, yeah. it's a really good drama. And I'll put it on and there'll be like a hint of futuristic anything. Oh, it's oh, a sci-fi. Yeah. Turn it off. I'm like, oh, yeah, It has to be real subtle. Yeah. yeah I like it's a good story. Be, we got to yeah. watch the story. Yeah. See, I'm, that's, that's funny. That's the one that we're all the wives are somewhere on. Cause that's Katrina and I actually watch almost all the same TV. We're into all the, most of the same stuff, except for that. Mm. That's the one that and I and I can't get her to watch as many. I would watch more documentaries. I like documentaries. Yeah, so do I. So like, if I can't find anything on oh, TV, yeah. I feel like I can always find a good documentary that I'll want to watch, so, and I'll I'll default to that. Or she'll be like, eh, she don't want to watch. Have it. you guys th seen? Mm -hmm. uh, I talked about it once, but have you guys seen Stutz yet? Yeah. Oh, oh you yeah. Watched it. What did yeah, you guys think of that? Oh, Katrina loved it. Katrina actually. It's so good. Yeah, right? Katrina it good. paused it and did a bunch of processing watching it. So did we. We yeah, pause yeah. and would talk about yeah, it. Pause yeah. and talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what it was... a brilliant therapist and such an endearing uh, man and the way he communicates. So good. Yeah. It's yeah. phenomenal. A lot of people are talking about it right now. 
Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's a good show. It was, yeah, it's excellent. I mean, it's different, right? It's that like you 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 can't go into it thinking you're going to watch like a good show or a good movie. It's it was brilliantly done and unique, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think mm-hmm. you've ever seen. And you some, take away a lot from it. Yeah, you definitely. I like. The, I mean, the part where he talked about how taking care of your physical health will take care of 85%. This is his words, 85% of people's anxiety and depressive issues. Because you know how many times I get young men who are just feeling like crap, I get them to exercise and eat right and it mm-hmm. fixes their problems. Yeah. I mean, we've seen this, but to hear it from uh, you know, a really, really well-respected therapist say it's that. Validating it's validating. Yeah, for sure. exactly. Yeah. Totally yeah. validating. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, anyway, cocaine bear. Crap cocaine bear. So, all right, so uh, you mentioned Chappelle, which made me think of Elon. Oh, yeah. Did you, see, okay, so tell me about what what's this thing here. So, well, first of all, Chappelle and uh, Chris Rock were together, right? I wish we would have went to that. I don't well, know that's why. here in San Jose. Yeah, yeah. I don't we're know so why we, stupid for not going. Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. why we slept on that. That, that was a bad. That's one. like that's your wheelhouse, Adam. I guess you should have been. The one to I think us. I think Justin watches I way didn't more. Stand- get notified. Like, yeah, you I'm watch way more stand up than I do. So yeah. yeah, but you're all about the cool stuff happening around us. Oh, that's a cool thing. Okay, that's what that was. I'll I'll take the take it for the team on that one. Um, he was they were here, and I guess. Elon I, Chappelle uh, introduced him to the, to the to, yeah uh, introduced the audience that the richest man in the world's here and said hi and I he came up on stage and supposedly he got booed well according to all the articles oh, that are floating around man. all over the place now according to Musk and people that were there told me that it was like 90 10 90 cheers 10 percent boos and then you're getting the complete opposite being reported on the other way. and conveniently there's no videos of of this. <laughs> And supposedly, the 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 rumor in the media is that people did share it on Twitter, and Twitter removed the videos of him booing. That's what the he owns these, Twitter. You should put him back up. Yeah, no, so that's what. So the articles are saying. Oh, that, that he removed that it. he yeah. got booed like crazy, and the reason why we can't see any videos of it is because he removed all of it. Well, yeah. then it should be on Facebook. Yeah, I know. it should be on these other I platforms. It's Bro, it's the, hilarious. The, 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 the effort. To target him right now it's is so bad. Is crazier than I think I've ever seen. Like the minute that the news came out that he was getting it, like the they just every. I mean, they even pulled up stuff like I remember seeing articles about him buying multiple private jets and just any. And then the kid, all his kids stuff. Can't how many kids he has? Like anything that they can they can attach to like making him look like a puke. Yeah, is is hitting the news. It's well, crazy. Who's, I mean, who's sticking their neck out more than him these days? Can someone please? Like he needs. 24 hour security. It's cr- like he like talk about the biggest hornet's nest of all time. And he just has a stick and just like bam. Bro, the, the Twitter <laughs> like, files that are coming out right whoa. now show clear, clear cooperation between political parties, government, and social media. Clear. Yeah. Yeah. Clear. Um <clears throat> he's also did you see his la- one of his la- latest tweets where he said, My pronouns are yeah. prosecute Fauci. Fauci, yeah. yeah. That Which, one, I was like, "Wow, dude. bro!" Somebody, I, I, I feel real bad. Like, I'm, I'm worried about him. Is what I should say. I'm yeah. worried about the guy because uh, he's that machine. Whatever that machine is, has taken out people in the past in terms of you know, taking out their credibility. They're obviously attacking him uh, from all angles. Are you current on All In right now? Uh, just, did I you, think so. Did you do Fridays? What was it about? So they talked about all this. Was, oh no, they, they, no, I guess not. Oh yeah, yeah. They talked. They talked all, and then also what he's going to do as far as um, and and Chamath was talking about how he thinks that this actually should almost become law for all social media, and that he's going to be completely transparent with why you're if you're shadow banned, oh, why you're that, shadow yeah. banned, that yeah. you can petition it. Like it, it, there's going to be complete transparency around what is happening with the algorithm so everybody knows and it's like you know what's crazy is like that should be adopted by every in the standard from the very beginning can can i tell you something he's already the the like i don't know again i want to say this because people are stupid about this that i don't know the man so i don't know if he's a good guy i don't know if he's a good father i don't know if he's a good friend any of that stuff but objectively he's the greatest entrepreneur in modern times the guy created a space company and by the way please before that was nasa Mm-hmm. And he, and it became successful and profitable. He created a car company, one of the most like nobody creates a new car company. Not only did he do that, he got rid of the cartel between the dealerships and the cars and who sells them or whatever. Mm-hmm. He did it direct. He broke all the rules, made it a profitable company. He PayPal 
made that massively profitable with other people. Solar, boring company, Solar, like, list goes on. Like, okay, so here he goes. He takes over Twitter, which is, of all the social media companies, was the shittiest one at the time, right? It was just oh, crappy. And we know this. We see the numbers and whatever. Now it's, it's a propaganda machine. Now it's starting to grow. It, could you imagine if he turns Twitter into the social media company? He's to going follow? to. He's yeah, going to. That's insane. He's going to. That'll why be crazy. Why, why, why wouldn't he? Look at his track record and almost everything else that he's touched. And you got to think, and part of why I think he even did it is because he looks at the other stuff. He's like, the guy, like you said, he he built something to rival NASA. Come on. Like the, a fucking social media company? Yeah. He's like, come on, I could do this. Yeah, well, yeah. We'll, we'll see. I'll we, take this out of the shitter. I'll we'll see, but it's crazy. It seems like Twitter existed uh, simply to uh, be this kind of loudspeaker for... Uh, I guess special interest. So I don't think it's that nefarious. I don't think that. Bro, have you read the Twitter? So I don't. So I don't. I don't. I don't believe that. I don't buy that. What I. What I think. I mean, it's all there. Well, yeah. Like, yeah but here, there's it's okay. There's a better explanation, in my opinion. Okay, they've already done the polls on it. Like ninety percent of Twitter is liberal, that work there, and these are the people that are are making the controls. Okay, and and they do social media has at, at this time in our in our lifetime. Right, this has only been around for fifteen years. It's it's very new this idea of like this like what do we do with this type of content and I think what they've done is they used the policies that were in place and they geared it favorable to their views. I don't think it was like this yeah, master. Why isn't people. that nefarious? I, yeah. Well, it's because it, I don't think they thought about it like that. I don't think it was like oh we're gonna do this. Oh no to, no no no! It was thought of. Did was, you see the correspondence deliberate. between with the with the Hunter Biden uh, laptop? Yeah. Them going back and forth, them saying, "Oh, I don't think we this we can do this, but let's do it anyway." Type of deal, or kicking Trump off of Twitter, yeah. Like they knew and they talked about it in the in the correspondence. So and people like was it Michelle Obama was actually telling Twitter, "You should take again." Trump okay, so let's let's yep. let's put it in since we're in this world. I don't think there's like one okay, person yeah yeah, but control. let's put let's put this into perspective. Okay, let's put it in our world. Now, obviously, we're not as big as Twitter, but imagine that we were. The amount of like hate and, and comments and negative stuff. We were, I mean, you already said it the other day. You said it not that long ago where you're like, you know what? It's it, We're getting this place now where I think I'm just going to start to delete stuff that is just negative or evil or vicious that people are posting on there. Okay. Right. That you and we, we all would have an internal conversation about that if we were to move in that direction. Yeah. I'm not, and I'm, we all have our own, our own political views and thoughts about how we view the world. And so you are seeing a conversation internally that's happening about you're, you're explaining like that. why, but that yeah. doesn't matter. Here's the problem. Listen, I'm not what, what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not defending it by any means. You're just explaining why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, I, I, I just think that it's, it's, it's every, that's not new with contradictions. That's not because that would have happened across the board from anybody saying anything hateful, which was happening completely. Listen, in a different direction listen, as well. We, we have very very specific protections for free speech. But the protections for free speech are for are the government. In other words, if I want to tell you to shut up because you're on my podcast, I can do that. It's a private podcast, right? If I have a guest that's on and we do this interview, I don't like it. I don't have to air it, right? But the the government is barred from uh, from censoring speech. They are barred from censoring the media. So what they've done and what the Twitter with these files that came out are showing is that they used. They they censored through by proxy. They they shielded I, the, themselves. The, the, the with CDC this, like, the CDC sent stuff and influenced these people. So I and so my my my, my, is, my 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 defense is Twitter in that situation. You've got a government entity that is telling you, hey, this is dangerous information. What do you do? Again, put it back on us. Like CDC or someone's coming down on us. We have our own private company that we're building and running. And, and oh, by the way, our our. Political views happen to align with them also, so it's pretty easy for us to go like, okay, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna so shadow that, ban. That gonna... should be illegal. It should be illegal that the government tells. I, th media, I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree. social media. I don't tells disagree with that. That's that is government though. That's not Twitter. So I don't I don't blame what? Twitter as a private entity for that situation. No, what I, I blame government. The, what is I blame is the lies them. for sure. They lied about it for a long time. No, we're not doing that. That's not what we're doing. Who's they though? You know, uh, Twitter. Twitter would come out and say, we don't Twitter's do that. Not we don't person. shadow ban. Twitter's not a person. The company, man. Twitter, the the whoever the spokespeople, I don't know the person's name, but they would come out and say, no, we're not shadow banning. No, we don't do that. I know, but no, they're, they're okay. So, the, okay, Jack Dorsey came out and said all those things, right? So, there's also a, a very good possibility that some of the things that were happening, the people that were pulling the levers, 
that Jack Dorsey was unaware of that. Okay, stuff. so if one of our employees okay, misrepresents yes. us, right. whose fault is it? It is ours. Okay, so, so not- that's my point. My point is, is that it's it, it is nefarious in that sense, <clears throat> and I'm glad it's getting revealed. And it goes way, it's way worse than that because the other, look, all the people, everybody who's suspected that big tech is, is geared in a particular direction is censoring something. Like, for example, there were, there were legit like pedophile tweets that went out. You know what they would do? Delete the tweet, leave the poster alone. They didn't shadow ban them. They didn't kick them off. You had people going out saying, Hey, I'm not going to get vaccinated because this doesn't have a lot of studies behind it. Not only they get rid of the tweet, they banned the person. Yep. Like this is crazy to me. Well, I can't. That that's a whole nother discussion. I can't get behind or even comprehend what the fuck is going on with the whole child shit. Like the stuff that we're seeing right now on the on the pedophile side and yeah. and with the elites, with uh, with the Hollywood, with these social media companies. Like I can't even wrap my brain around it because I don't. I I don't mean I've I have yet to know anybody who isn't disgusted by the Balenciaga stuff and disgusted with yeah. the stuff that's coming out like that. So who the fuck? Is approving or well, allowing? I shield all this stuff. Yeah, who is like who has got that much power and that much control that these types of companies, these types of people, are being shielded? This is just protected? inconsistencies and contradictions that uh, you know, whatever their motives are, are relevant to me. You, you can't have like just one sided. Uh, if this is a platform for everybody to speak and and speak their mind and have their cause and, and all that, it has to be across the board. Yeah, you cannot just like completely scrub it into one direction. You don't have anything for you. Yeah. Well, that's why I think this is such an is such a beautiful solve. What he's about to do, and it, and I think that this is one of those cool things. You know, this is another example of great free market stuff. Is that yes, these are all private companies; they can choose to do what they want. But when he's when he sets the tone. Is that we are going to show you the yeah. algorithm? And he, I mean, out, and he outcompetes the other. Yeah, yeah. and by the way, transparency is always going to be key. As, as as you know, creators that utilize a lot of these platforms, one of the most frustrating parts. I mean, before we started this podcast today, we were banging our heads, going like, "What the fuck is going on with YouTube right now? You know, what? Why are we not? Why are we not growing? All of a sudden, we've halted. We've slowed way down out of out of nowhere. You know, it sucks. It's like we have we have no clue. We're yeah. guessing constantly, throwing spaghetti right. on the wall, trying to figure out the algorithm. Like, yeah. how nice no would it be? It's like, here's you know. what you need to do. Yeah. Boop, 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 and then the 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 best man wins. It's the you it's, know. I'll tell you right now what yeah, it is. Clarity. It's the fucking evil fitness cartel trying to stop us <laughs> from telling the truth. It's, 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 hey, Beach Buddy. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> we, the, fi- we finally woke up the, Beach Buddy. It's the Satan worship. The only ones that got yeah. billions of dollars. It's, it's the only ones that step can, to Alex Jones. They're the only ones Here that can slow us it, down. It's you know the Satan worshiping fitness cartel. Look, we're trying to do the it. good stuff here. So <laughs> share us. Make sure you share us so we can defeat the evil fitness cartel. <laughs> Help, hey, us, what help if, us beat the what, hey, what if the leader, help us beat the pedophiles? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, what does the leader of the fitness, the evil fitness cartel look like? Yeah, I don't know. He's like this, <laughs> he's like the liver king. Yeah. That son of a bitch. I knew it. You know? <laughs> Job of the hut. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's, a, he's a fat dude. Yeah. No, uh, we can't get people to man. I'd really like it. I like to see his numbers right now. The amount of publicity that guy is getting. I actually, when I went on, uh, if you go on his Instagram and you look at the the comments, like eighty percent of them are crap or bad, negative. They, yeah. People are calling him the 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 lie, uh, not the liver king, the lying the lying king, like lie. Oh like yeah, lie that's good. Yeah, I mean, I would, I'd be, le- I'm less interested in what the the dweebs on Twitter and Instagram say. I'm more interested in like website traffic. Mm. That's what I'd like to see. Mm. Because I, I mean, you guys know that. I mean, how many times have we posted or done something, and then the you know the mob of like people that you ruffle their. I mean, how many times when we do it, any, if we say anything about vegans. It's guaranteed we got 20 comments coming for shit real quick. Uh, actually, yeah. you know what's funny? So we have a postpartum doula that works with us, and she's uh, she's vegan, and she's a le- she's like uh, God for for la- just for look. I know I'm gonna offend some people, but she's a real vegan. What I mean by that is, <laughs> what I mean by that is, studies will show that if if somebody she's tries to go electric car. if someone tries to go vegan to lose weight or because they think it'll improve their health their consistency with it or their ability to stick to it is as good as anybody trying to follow any diet. So someone tries to follow keto, anybody who tries to follow, you know, carnivore or whatever, it's the super high fail rate. Now the ones that stick well, to because it because they're they're misled. They're well, misled to believe that that's a it's a it just, it's a it better just, way of eating. It just doesn't work, right? But the ones that stick to it are the ones that really have like these ethical issues that really believe animals shouldn't be harmed. So I asked her about this and she said, yeah, she goes, I've been, a, I've been like this since I was, I think since she was 10. I'm like, since you were 10, she goes, yeah, once I kind of realized what I was doing, she's like, I couldn't do it anymore. 
And she and I, so we started talking, and she's telling me about how she organizes her food, how she supplements, uh, you know, how she feeds her kids because her kids are not that way. And I told her, I said, "Well, I, you've met <laughs> oh, a good few for, people. Hey, good for her. She, so she feeds her kid normal, and then she eats that way." So well, yeah, be, and, and and I said, "Well, why do you, why don't you?" She goes, "Because I know how much." She goes, "It's hard enough getting your kids to get all their nutrition." let alone taking out an entire category of nutritious foods. Right. So we had this great conversation around it. Anyway, back to Twitter. I got to tell you guys, I got this. So we're supposed to mention uh, Zbiotics. So this goes right into it. So somebody on there, every time somebody gets annoyed with me on Twitter, they'll make a, like, it's like this, it's like a easy, please come up with better insults. Like, like oh, it? you're on steroids or, oh, you, you know, whatever. Or, oh, you guys, <laughs> whatever, dude. Anyway, <laughs> this guy goes on there and he goes, yeah, you're talking about health, but you guys talk about, drinking alcohol and uh you i thought you were a fitness podcast i'm like dude do you listen to my show at no, all it's never somebody <laughs> it's, who does bro. no so you're not puritanical enough yeah so <laughs> you know health isn't just about in fact health is not being rigid and perfect with everything health also is about enjoying the moment connecting with people and there are benefits to enjoying the taste of something or how something may make you feel like alcohol so can alcohol be healthy? Yes, it can be healthy with bonding. There can be some psychological health. Of course, it can be abused and it can be unhealthy. So I did this whole like reply to it or, what, or, or whatever. Now, along those lines, and here's a Z-Biotics part, you can do things to mitigate the physiological damage that alcohol can uh, potentially produce or just a shitty day after feeling. And there, boom, there, insert Z-Biotics. That, that'll help with that big time. <laughs> so That's so funny you get like that. I know, I know. It's, 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 it's funny. Every once in a while you get these, like, these fitness zealots yeah, uh, who think being orthorexic is what health is all about, being like super rigid. And I'm like, no, man. There was that one, there was that one famous study we've talked about many times where they well, showed relationships? that. Relationships? Yeah, having poor yeah. relationships in your life was as bad for your health as smoking 10 cigarettes a day. It was more than that. Yeah, or a pack. Yeah, How much yeah. is in a it was, pack? Uh, no, it was like 50 cigarettes. It was, something, it was a crazy number. I think it was a pack. I don't think it was 50. But but nonetheless- Fact check me, Doug. That's a lot. It was a lot. Uh, nonetheless, that's unhealthy. Right. And so think about all the fitness fanatics that we've known in our life who don't go to parties, don't hang out with friends because they, they don't want to miss leg day. They got to, oh, can't go out and eat because I have to have my perfect food. Yeah. So it's like they're trading You're one for lame. the other. Yeah. yeah. Well, I listen, it, it, what ends up happening too, a lot of them are just young, right? They're young and they, they came up in this this in the last 15 years, right, in the fitness space. And so we were we were around pre social media. So we had we had the opportunity to kind of see this before it came when it was coming. And I think you have some of these kids that were born into it. And in fact, when we were out at uh, in Utah, the property, I was talking to somebody and, and I'll, I'll either beep his name out or not use his name actually. I'll, that way it'll be easier. Um a big social media person, right? Millions of followers. And I was talking to him on the phone and, and he's young, a little bit younger than we are almost by 10 years. And you could tell he's just, he's exhausted. Very, very successful, done really well, well loved. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes him, stuff like that. And, but like just at a point in his life where he's like, dude, I'm, I'm like, I'm so tired of like having to create this content every single day. And like, he's built this following that ha expects him to, be talking to his Jeez. stories every single day, seven days a week. And he's been consistent with that forever. Sure. He takes these little day or a couple day breaks at best, but that to, to have, have that pressure of like putting out your yourself like that on in the internet every single day to be subjected to these people that are going to bark at you and talk shit. I'm just like, so unhealthy yeah, recipe for failure, right? There. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, it, it, and even, if, even if you have, you have great financial success in the short term with it, the long-term effects of getting sucked into that is, it, you, you can't imagine what that would be like. I mean, and I think that if you're, if you, you don't know any better because you you grew up with that, you don't know kind of life without it. And I just think that a lot of these these characters that that, that build themselves up on on these platforms, you're gonna be. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens to a lot of them in 10, 15, years. Well, the worst, years. what's bad about it is on the outside, a kid may watch this and think that that's great. That's what I want. Wow, look at that person. I want to be just like that, not realizing the personal hell. And a kid might. That's like the, isn't that like the number one thing now in is. like junior highs and so like that? You ask them what they want to do, and they say YouTube star, yes. social media star. I know. Blech. I know. I mean, that's a little. You know how you know you know what's unhealthy is placing so much value on those fake relationships that where your likes in the comments and your fans and you know you know followers or whatever, like those aren't real relationships. They may appreciate what you do. They may find some value in what you're doing. So there's some value there, but it's not a lot of value. It's not like 
the relationship you have with your kids or your best friends or your spouse, where that really matters. So when they give you a negative comment or you're always trying to get their approval, it's like, what are you doing? It's like you're yeah. you're it's like you're drinking seawater to, well, to, to quench your thirst. I made sure to represent the fun side of mind pump this weekend. Oh wait, real quick, fifteen F- cigarettes a day, to, uh, Adam. So uh, I was closer than you. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's a lot, huh? Is uh, that what it, I don't know what's in a pack? Do you what's in a pack? Doug? No idea, Andrew. It's been a couple of years since I smoked. <laughs> and, <laughs> don't act like you don't know. Yeah. Nobody knows. This. You know, it also All says right, like good. poor You've never marriages. Smoked a single cigarette in your life, ever? Not really? a single cigarette. Wow! Wow! I didn't, didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, I've never been a fan, but I've definitely tried. 20 cigarettes in a pack. So, you know, almost oh, close. less than a pack. I thought it was more. Okay. Yeah, I remember the first time I tried a cigarette, I was in Italy. I was 12, and my 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 family members would throw their little like cigarettes off the balcony over there, to, you know, because they were done with it. And I'd look up. Nobody's looking. I'd pick it up, and there were like a few drags left on it. Oh, my God. Dude, I got sick to my Europe's stomach. Europe's crazy with smoking cigarettes. I know. Yeah. All right. Anyway, you were going to say yeah, something? Yeah. Oh, well, I was representing us this weekend. I went to a party, this uh, holiday party. Christmas party, uh, my friend threw, and uh, I had met him by one of Courtney's friends. So it was like I've hung out with them maybe like a couple times, but I don't really know them specifically. So I was like a little bit unsure of like if it was going to be super fun, like what to do. It's a Christmas party where you have like the ugly sweaters and all that, and so I'm like. Okay, I, I got to figure out something that's kind of like a conversation piece. So I decided to go with like the the Uncle Eddie theme. That's what you were. Yeah. So I saw it, and you I'm didn't like, know what that was? No, you know what? I knew uh, right away. No, 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 no. Uh, right away. I, I now knew it was, I'm disappointed. No, I knew it was uh, National Lampoons. Yeah, I knew that, but I, I and I only briefly looked at it, and I couldn't piece together the character. It was, it was you uncle. serious right now, Clark? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. So it was, I was so good. Dude, so I went in <laughs> and I had the shoes and everything. Bro, it fit really well. Too. You know, maybe why it was so unassuming. Because it didn't look bad. Yeah, because it, it was done. Yeah, it like, wasn't like hokey enough. Yeah, yeah it was, but it was funny because I went all these different websites to, to piece it together. And how much like, you, everything how much fit you me perfect, dude. How much you spent on the outfit? It was probably like 50 bucks. It wasn't like- No dude, way. That I whole swear, thing? I swear. The shoes too? They're like 10 bucks. No way. It was like the cheapest stuff you could- Dude, the wow. pants were like um, like scrub pants, you know, like somebody'd wear to really yeah, like a nurse or wow, yeah. you did so good. I'm so impressed right now. Yeah, it was like super thrifty. Anyway, so I get there and like it was fun. It was raining, and so everybody's inside. They're playing like beer pong. It was like rem- remind me of like college. I haven't played in like forever. But there was this it's like riding a bike. It's like riding a bike. All good. Like, oh, damn, I'm naturally just good at this. <laughs> I can drink. And uh, we we had this <laughs> white elemental <laughs> champion. <laughs> <laughs> just pull out the belt. Yeah, yeah. So we did the white elephant gift thing, and we kind of wrapped ours. Ours was pretty neutral. It was like a, um, a a game, a meme game of like The Office or something stupid. But there's some people that brought some heat. To, I to the party. I love to bring. I like to be the guy who brings like the most like inappropriate. Dude, like, it's white elephant. They don't know who it is. Yes, <laughs> yeah. and there was a good fifteen or twenty people or so, and we're all kind of gathered around. And at this point, we're all kind of feeling it. We've been drinking a bit, and uh, I was talking to this guy who's hilarious. He just like he was just cracking me up all night. He gets like the first cho- like choice. He goes out and he picks this box and he opens it up and is looking at it and is kind of like trying to figure out what and he's just like pocket pussy no <laughs> yes and he's like so excited about it and everybody's just like dying and like crying and, and to the point where like he's figuring out everybody's laughing all this stuff and he's like because you can steal other right, people's right. gifts and everything he's like he's like well and he just Steps out the door. I'll see you guys later. Goes in the car, drives home. <laughs> no, he like, did it. He's like, I'm out of here. Wait, he actually left? <laughs> for real? I was laughing so hard for like an hour because he literally just like- He just, left. Uh, like, that was the ultimate comedy move, right? That's like, good, you get man. the high of it, and then you just like- Yeah. He that's was the, out. That's the George Costanza Never saw right him there. again, the dude. Out. He's just like- <laughs> Wow, he drop. committed to that. He's like, yeah, he committed. He left like Props. That. Props. Wow. Somebody Mad props. Br- somebody get put a sex toy in Oh, yeah. I totally that's I I've there was done a vibrator anal beads and before. A- I did, it's the best ever because then you get somebody who gets it, they're like, they don't want it, and then it ends up being this thing where it's like you get it to move twice to where it gets stuck on somebody. Just as so, long as uh, it's not a re-gift. You know dude. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> dude was my hero. I got a picture of him before he left too, just to make sure. Wow. Yeah, wow. Oh, so a good shit. party then, huh? It was fun though. Yeah, we had a good time. And then the costume had to have been a hit. I mean, people- Yeah, it was fun because like 
it, it and it was good that actually I didn't like know how it was going to go down, but like everybody there that got it, got it. And were throwing me quotes like half the time. So it was like, I wasn't just, you know, awkward guy like, Hey, I don't know you, but uh, my name is this. They're like, you know, shit or fool or yeah, whatever. <laughs> like they're just coming up with quotes and throwing it at me. All what night. a great so movie. Yeah. I love those national lampoon movies. What's that scene where he's driving? I don't think it was the, the Christmas Ferrari. One. Well, yeah, he's driving. And then yeah. the Ferrari with that's national that? lampoon's vacation. Was that Christy Brinkley? Was it Christy yes. Brinkley where she pulls oh, up next to him? Doug knew that. Really, I knew that one. Doug knew that really quick. Yeah. yeah. His wife's sleeping <laughs> next to him. He's like, oh, hey, what's going on? Hey, hey, yeah. <laughs> and there's always a scene where they're coming out of the pool, right? Like all those old <laughs> 80s true. movies, dude. And they're like looking at it through like, the window. It. Hey, I looked at, um, you brought up on the show the other day, um, chat GPT. Yes. So um, I've, I've watched some things about it. I've now tried to get on it four or five times. It's, it, it's crashed. Too many people. What the fuck? Bro, it's, it's, I think more people visited it, that site, in three days than kinda, like all I, the social I media. I kind of feel like this is a hustle. Kind of no. feel like, you know, that's they put, another board ape. Kind no. of yeah, dude, they put all this hype out around it, and then everybody's like, Dude, trying to get on it, and everybody's like, damn, it's so good. You can't see it. Yeah. No. Truth social. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Bro. Yes, dude. Yes. Truth social, do you, dude? Yes, dude. I'm, I'm kind of. I'm my my cousin. Smelling bullshit. My cousin who's in tech, and he's he's helped, uh, you know, grow some companies, and he's in that, in, in you know, that whole space or whatever. He says that the technology behind it, he's like, Sal, this is going to be like the internet. Like, literally, it's going to be that disruptive. <clears throat> Where when it really comes out and they really put it together, he goes, we can't even imagine the innovations and the things that it's going to. Okay, so I'm completely oblivious. And so this is like a, a. So imagine imagine the most sophisticated Google yeah. without you having to basically type it in. Like you literally you just, just speak it. Speak it. Okay. And literally like to this point, Justin, like you. Why is that different than you Alexa? Did your, you, did your, you did your post, mm -hmm. like your picture. Write me a caption for this post. And it will? Yes. Or you can create me a movie about Justin, Adam, and Sal from Mind Pump that's an action, whatever, like give it parameters, and it'll script out. And uh, you can do it. You can do it like this. You could say, write me a caption. We're going to be so relevant. You could be like, write me a caption in uh, 1800s English. <laughs> Or write me a caption. Ooh, I'm gonna uh, do that for my wife. In the in, uh, <laughs> like a Quentin Tarantino film, and yes. they'll do it in a way to where you, it's like it matches what you're asking. And also, uh, you could take what? like a, you could copy paste uh, a, a, an equation, and it'll. Well, it's, so to do your homework for you. Yeah, like, so, okay, so now that, okay, this is what brings me to the, the my conversation kids are, I wanted. Aren't to gonna have learn anything. So I get people are already supposedly using it, and and do it all, and it's and it's supposed to be amazing. But you're definitely you're 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 plagiarizing. AI is creating. It's not you who's doing it. And so this whole idea of like letting them write your captions, but then not disclosing it's not it's you. Going to write people's papers for them. Well, that it, if yes, that's what that's what I'm saying. So let me ask you guys this. So how do you how do you work around that? Well, so I was going to say this. And it's for, indecipherable. Like, come on. Like, well, you'd have get, to be able to see signs. Bro, it's of, getting it's getting that good. It's, people can't tell. What? So it's going to, first thing it's going to eliminate or replace is customer service. Gone. Oh, yeah. That's You'll get on and you don't even know you're talking for to For sure, that'd be the first. Copywriters are, are the next, mm. where you're going to want copy for emails, for sales copy, for whatever. And it'll do it and it'll sound like your company. Damn. This is how uh, incredible it is. But here's my question forget the plagiarizing and stuff like that. When it gets so good that we don't need to know anything, we just need to have this assistant. Yeah. What's the use of learning anything? Like we're just gonna walk around and be like idiocracy, man. I'm telling you guys, like we're closer seriously, and closer. Think, think about that. Well, okay, so what's the value? Okay, be? so the the challenge or the thing that someone like you would normally say in this situation is that we'll just progress and we'll solve other problems as a society. So the things yeah. like like the calculator that they thought the same thing when the calculator came around. Like, oh my god, we're never gonna do math again. We're gonna forget how to do math. Blah blah blah. Like, no, sped up the process. Free us up for interstellar travel. And then guys. and then it, and then it allows us to go solve bigger and harder problems. And so the argument to that would be, okay, yeah, it's gonna solve a lot of mundane stuff that doesn't cause us to stop and think about something for an hour of our time. Now we have that hour we can dedicate towards progressing humanity. So that would be the argument that it's not. Well, gonna, I don't know about the progressing humanity part. I used to say that about the internet. And then it happened, <laughs> and then it seems like people got dumber. Yeah. So I used to be, I used to be that kid. I used to be like, oh, it's gonna solve. Like now we're gonna have all the information, access to all the information. Like humanity's gonna progress so fast, 
And then they have like flat earth society yeah. and like weird we're shit. so dependent on it now just for any kind of uh, information recall. Like you don't have any memory recall as in terms of like, I don't know. It's going to be weird, man. But my cousin literally said it'll be as revolutionary as the internet to the point where we're not even, we, we can't even begin to imagine the innovations and the ways that this is going to change. Well, people are saying speed every industry up. People are saying it's going to, it's going to replace Google. Wow. Or wh how Google is now, because like Adam made the point, maybe Google will buy. Yeah, it. I am. I imagine Google would buy if this thing gets enough traction that Google either one would buy it or reverse engineer the technology and build it within their own their own ecosystem, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that I, I think that's why I didn't get so excited about it right out the gates because I'm just like, okay, what I understand about the app world and the tech world is as far as how you can reverse engineer stuff, like. Once you get to a certain level of power, like the Amazons, like the Facebooks, like the yeah. Googles, like, I mean, when you see these up and coming companies like, oh, cool story, bro. But they'll either one buy it. If they can't buy it, they'll reverse engineer it and they'll build it themselves. You know, so it's like, I don't know if it the technology, I 100 percent believe it's like the future. I think it's one of the the the, the most uh, valuable things that we've seen um, AI produce so far. Hmm. We've got all this stuff that we keep talking about, like. What, how AI is going to shake up everything and be so different to me. This is the first thing. This is the first thing yeah. that it goes like, oh, okay. Like this is going to, this has a lot of application for a lot of different things. And this could definitely so disrupt you know, a lot of things. You industries. know, when you want to go on Google and you ask it basic questions like, um, you know, how many cups of water in a gallon or whatever. And rather than go, showing you websites, it just gives you the answer. Yeah. Now more complicated stuff. It gives you the websites to read yourself. This is basically going to be that the answer. So you ask it, whatever. And it'll give you the answer rather than having rather you go than through. Rather than having to thumb through and decipher yourself. And I, actually think, I actually think most, I rarely ever does Google give me That's the answer. Crazy. They always it give does me a for website. Basic stuff. Huh? For basic stuff it does. Real basic. Yeah. Almost always when I search it, like what I think would be basic, it's not. Correct. A, yeah. It Correct. still sends me to a website that yeah. I got to go. I, which, I mean, like you said, that alone is having the. The answer read to you right away, like that's that's a big deal. Crazy. All right, so we're supposed to talk about creatures of habit. Adam, you were saying you've been getting uh, some comments from people about how much they like it. Yeah, no, I think it's it's uh, one of the things we've talked about in on the show recently is the importance of getting protein early in your diet or early in the day, mm -hmm. to stay ahead. And then just most breakfast foods are so carb heavy, and there's not a lot. A lot of people who think they're having a protein breakfast are having like two eggs. Yeah. And, a, and a piece of, you know, toast and something else. And it's like, you know, what are you getting? Like 12 grams of protein? And having a high protein breakfast stabilizes your blood sugar and insulin throughout the day. Redu it results in less calories throughout the day, they yeah. show. It actually, and this is old bodybuilding wisdom, by the way, that's been proven by a lot of studies. Having a high protein breakfast makes the rest of the day typically healthier and better. Yeah, yeah. Which is really interesting. No, it's, so. become, a, it's become a staple for me. I love it. It's, I mean, I see you. I, I don't think it's you guys. Somebody is eating it I like crazy here. I eat them all the time. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, we have one it's that also gets shipped super here easy and I'm digest. bringing some of my own personal one here and you guys are still going through it. It's quick. super easy to digest. So people don't know, it's basically, it's oatmeal that also has 30 grams of protein, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, probiotics, and digestive enzymes. And they don't use whey, so you can- Digest it fine. Yes, so I can have it because it's not dairy. Check this out. You're not what you eat. You're what you digest. Now, we lose digestive enzymes as we age, and if you don't have enough of these enzymes, you might only be absorbing 40% of the protein you're eating. It's total waste. Masszymes breaks down the protein you eat into usable amino acids and boosts your absorption of nutrients. So what does this mean? Faster muscle recovery, more energy, less inflammation, a healthier gut, and better digestion. Masszymes is for anyone who wants optimal digestion and to get rid of uncomfortable bloating and gas once for all. Also on the website, they actually have a video of Masszymes breaking down a piece of steak. Super cool. Check it out. Anyway, go to masszymes.com. That's M A S S Z Y M E S.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mind pump 10 for 10% off any order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Pierre from Ontario. Pierre, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, I'm doing good. How about you? Good, good. Uh, I just want to start with uh, thanking you guys and also actually praising, especially for your Prime and Prime Pro programs. Hey, hey. awesome. Yeah, I've been using those, and I'm actually a uh, I've been a part time professional wrestler for the last twenty years, and the last since I've gotten these programs last year, I've now used them to prime before my matches and I find I'm not as uh, sore or stiff afterwards. Good Hell deal. Yeah. That's awesome. Good deal. What's your name, yeah. by the way, in the wrestling circuit? 
Uh, Caster McFear. <laughs> Caster McFear. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I'm a Hollywood actor. I get, try to get my opponent to follow a script that I give them. And, of course, it never goes according to plan. And I get mad. And I think, yeah, things just never go by the script. So, <laughs> so that, it's fun. More, more, more character work than what a lot of these uh, young guys do while flipping around and all that. <laughs> oh, good deal. Awesome. All right. Going. So, what's your question? Uh, so, I'm currently almost done MAPS power lift, which has been uh, it's the first time I've done a power lifting program. I'm on the last week, actually, right now. And it's really good. So, I'm j- I've just been wondering, uh, would there be, be any value of getting maybe a therapeutic massage or some other kind of massage either after I'm done the program before transitioning into another program or if there's even any value of uh, doing that before I go and test some new PRs on my big lifts if I were to do that. Tremendous benefit. Yeah. Like real uh, correctional massage. Well, all massage, uh, it's got applications, but like really good correctional therapeutic massage. It's uh, first off, good therapists know the body quite well and they can feel when they need to work on, uh, you know, a muscle more and, and maybe avoid other areas, but it, it improves range of motion. It helps with stiffness and tightness. It helps with muscle connection, blood flow. Um, I mean, I think a really good massage therapist is invaluable. In fact, it would be like one of my top five people that I would refer my clients to. Accelerates um, recovery. Yeah. yeah, it's it's super valuable. Well, um, very similar to the benefits that you're feeling from Maps Prime. I mean, the 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 priming, the way you felt that uh, translate into your your wrestling and training. Uh, I think you would see similar benefits to getting massage therapy. In fact, uh, part of Prime and Prime Pro became necessary for me that I had to start doing it every workout because before that. Uh, my wife, who's a massage therapist, used to massage me every day. And so I could get away with not priming as much because how much the massage would help me to prepare my body before and after workouts. And so once I got rid of that, it became mandatory that I did the the priming in Prime Pro. So absolutely, it's got huge benefits to doing it. Um, is it so doing it between is it like between programs a good idea or is there more frequency would be? ideal like I mean, what's, what's an ideal the the, the the drawback is the cost i think because it's expensive but i mean you know in like a perfect world i mean a daily <laughs> a daily yeah. correctional massage yeah so frequency is very important so i would say whatever works with your schedule put it in as, as often as works with your schedule and with your yeah, budget too with right? your budget yeah if right. you can if you can if you have the luxury or if you married a therapist like i did you know and could get one every day that's amazing but that's not very realistic for most people because that's pretty expensive to do that so yeah, I'm with you can't Sal. go wrong with it. Yeah, as, as, as much as you can, I would incorporate that. I mean, that's what what I do is I I if if you can afford to have it on a weekly basis, see how much that improves your your wrestling and your lifting, and and mm-hmm. and if it is, then maybe it becomes something that becomes a problem. I know people that like that has they've introduced it into their life, and then now it's like paying electricity you budget around it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like paying an electricity bill or mm-hmm. anything else that you don't even think twice about. You just do because it made that much of an impact on their life. Yeah, well, especially if you're wrestling still at all, you know, just to be able to, uh, you know, preserve as much uh, joint function as possible. This is really going to help aid in that direction. Okay. Yeah, my regular job does give me benefits where we do get get some reimbursement for some uh, for some massage for some massages. So I'd have to look into how, how many how much I'm allowed per year to do that. So I might look into that. Plus, my wife's uh, cousin is a massage therapist. So there you go. Good deal. Oh so yeah, my, excellent. Okay, man. all right. Quick, quick follow up. So, the, what would be the best program for me to do next after power lift? Symmetry. Yeah, I go mm-hmm. map symmetry. Oh, yeah, hundred um, percent. And then mass performance would be great uh, after that. I think it would be those would be probably two most valuable programs for someone like you. Yeah, send them symmetry, Doug. Oh, oh, thank you. You got it, man. We hooked you up. Yeah. Oh, you guys are awesome. Yeah. Like you guys, I've got my wife doing maps anabolic right now. I've had her do that in performance and aesthetic. And I've done, I've done the, the RGB bundle. Uh, well, um, sorry, I'm trying blank. I did a anabolic performance aesthetic. Then I did maps hit, did anabolic again, then now power lift. So like your programs are real deal. Good Good deal, man. All right, man. man. Excellent. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for supporting us. 
Thanks, guys. You got Keep it. up the great work. All right, Pierre. Right. Yeah, that's weird. That's like the third. We have a lot of wrestlers. Pro wrestlers. I think There's, it's more than that. There is more than that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like the third Colin who's a pro wrestler. We've had more. I've had <laughs> I lots wonder of guys. That's pretty cool. I wonder what the pay is because obviously we know the famous pro wrestlers are millionaires, but you know, there's so much, like, there's all these pro wrestling circuits. Like, I wonder what the pay oh, I'm is sure like. I'm sure it's really hard to break through. Oh, I think it's probably terrible, bro. It's yeah. got to be, right? Yeah, I think it's probably really it's hard. Probably similar to, like, MMA fighting, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, where, hence, like, the top, t- like, yeah, the like, 5% the top make a ton. Versus the bottom. Yeah, yeah, I mean, hence why he's got a, a another, like, normal job, too, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm sure that's his dream and passion, and that's what he he's working towards. Yeah. But then you got to still have, like, a, a normal job that yeah. probably pays more. Yeah, I tell you what, with the massage therapy, if, if I had to pick one person that I partnered with that would give me the most broad ranging benefits to my clients. Boy, massage therapist, a really good one would be up there. It might be the person I would pick because almost every client I ever trained benefited from working with them. Whereas every client didn't necessarily benefit from acupuncture, wouldn't necessarily benefit from chiropractic work or, you know, other, other modalities. Uh, the massage, I had one in my studio and it was like all my clients worked with them and I I saw benefits on every single one, regardless if their goal was gain, lose mobility, you know, whatever energy, it just had uh, profound effects. I got a little fun fact. Did you know that Abraham Lincoln was an awesome wrestler? Catch wrestler. Yeah. Of course I knew that. Of course you do. Do you know the story about him? Did you? No, yeah. No, 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 okay. Oh, yeah. He was a badass. He was a champion. Did you know, know there was a story? Of history. He's going in the, in the um, Wrestling Hall of Fame. Catch Wrestling Hall of Fame. Have yeah. you heard about uh, this? You know the story where he, there was, a, I guess, these thugs or whatever that were on a riverboat, and he threw all three of them off the boat. <laughs> yeah. So Famous sick. story. <laughs> yeah. Really cool. Our next caller is Tess from North Carolina. Hey, Tess. How can we help you? Hey guys, how you doing today? Good, how are you? Good, I'm so excited. I'm like fangirling, honestly. Awesome. <laughs> um, it's funny because I, I said in my email that I'm a triplet and I have two little sisters and they're twins. Um, and I was like texting in the group chat. I was like, oh my God, you guys, I get to be on Mind Pump. So like we're all really excited. <laughs> wow. um, yeah, my sister Olivia actually introduced me to you guys a few years ago. And um it's become something that we've like been able to bond over and like laugh till we cry because you guys are just so funny. So thank you for that. Awesome. Um, thank you. So yeah, I'll go ahead and get it. Oh yeah. You guys are awesome. Um, and you're so humble still. Like, you know what I mean? You guys are awesome. So Amb- uh, basically Ad- Adam's the humblest. He go says ahead. All the, time. <laughs> the most humble. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah Adam, place. You're actually my sister's favorite. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Y
Yeah, so I've made a lot of um, street, street progress, but I feel like I could be making more. Um, I feel like when I'm lifting a lot, I'm kind of at the same weights, like time and time again. And sometimes even going up like five pounds is too hard. Um, and my stamina, like overall, like I'm much healthier um, than when I was even like six months ago. But I feel like I've kind of hit a plateau with a lot of the weights that I'm doing. Like, I don't feel like I'm getting stronger than I have been, if that makes sense. I, I would love to see a mini bulk and a change of training. So what, what pro, are you following one of our MAPS programs right now? No, I wasn't sure which one you guys would recommend um, to do. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Let's go MAPS and a bulk. Okay. Well, let's, let me ask a little more questions though. What, like right now, when you go to the gym, let's say in the last week or so, like what does your training kind of look like? Are you, are you uh, low rest periods? Do you, do you like keep, do you break kind of a sweat or do you lift heavier weight, low reps? Like what does your training kind of look like right now? Or what do you tend so to do? So right towards? now, yeah. So right now my split is like three. I have like three lower body days and then two is like, I have like a push and pull day. Um, usually I take like long, long rest periods. So I'll do like two to three minutes between sets. Um, if my, if I'm doing lower reps and higher weights, I'll rest a little bit longer. Um, but I'm not like going back to back to back. Like I'm giving myself some time to rest. Okay. I like anabolic maps mm -hmm. anabolic. Yeah. Yeah. I, like yeah I think you need to change your programming up. Yep. Also be careful of getting in the trap of, uh, I feel like I could be improving faster. Okay. So careful with that trap because if you're improving, you're doing good. And I've seen more people make mistakes by saying, "Ooh, I'm improving, but I could improve faster." Right, right. And they auto overcorrect. They just they yeah uh, they just they overdo it, or they change up their training when they shouldn't have, or they you know they their diet changes weren't appropriate. So as long as you're progressing in some way, shape, or form, more stability, better control, more energy, more strength, better connection to the muscle. Like as long as you're improving, you're improving. And be careful okay. with the like, because here's what people tend to do. Oh, I could be making faster progress. They almost never scale the workouts down. They almost always add more. They just mm -hmm. throw more on top of what they're doing. And that's usually the wrong thing to do when you're already improving. I think MAPS Anabolic is going to take your body and your strength to another level. That combined with a 250 to 300 calorie increase is what mm -hmm. I would do. That's it. So, I think that would be perfect. So yes. bump your calories a couple hundred and then and then switch to anabolic and stay there for a little bit. Especially that contrast. If you've just been doing splits the whole time, yep. like to do like total body workouts, I, I've found a lot of my clients like immediately their body responded. Totally. So I'm excited for you. 100%. Do you, do you train to failure or you make sure you stop a couple reps before that? Yeah, I don't really like to train to failure because I feel like, I mean, I'm open to it, but I feel like I get frustrated like when I'm like really failing. So I think that, I, I think it just depends on the day, like where my mind's at as well. Um, but I've, I think I've kind of been scared to like take that next jump into like really going like heavy or going like all full body. Um, cause I think like I can be my own worst critic and I can like get the best of myself. Yeah. Um, so that's hard to get past, but I think, you know, I kind of want to like, um, get out of that comfort zone that I've been in. Sorry, I was getting a call. Um, get out of that comfort zone that I've been in and kind of, um, take things to the next step. Yeah. Um, and go from there to see what I'm capable of. Yeah, I don't think going to failure is a good idea. I think just stopping a okay. couple reps. Yeah, stop a couple reps short of it. I think MAPS on a ball is going to blow you away. Mm -hmm. After that, I think MAPS Symmetry would be a good program don't, uh, to follow up. Don't with. be afraid of this, though, either. Okay, so this, because this is really common with my female clients. This is something I have to constantly remind Katrina when it comes to like pushing strength and trying to get strong. Okay, we're going to increase your calories. So that's going to help right away. We're going to switch you to a full body routine instead of a split. That's, that's going to help. When you get into a phase like the first phase of anabolic where it calls for like five reps, always, you know, stop two reps short of failure, but also don't be afraid to push the weight to where maybe you can only get three or four out. So you don't always have to get to five just because the program says five or put a weight on the bar that you know for sure you could get seven. So start to try and push yourself weight wise, like put weight on the bar that you maybe haven't done. And, and pay attention to how your body's moving through the reps. And if you notice like, oh, wow, I'm, an, I'm almost at failure. Okay, that's okay. You can stop at three reps. It's okay to do okay. Th three reps, even though the program's not calling for three reps. That was something I always had to, to remind Katrina when we're in that because we we're focused on building strength right now. And I want her to learn to push the weight and go harder. She would always choose a weight that she knew she could get five. And I'd be like, I know you got more than that. Put another five, put another 10 pounds on there. You got this. Like, and, and if you feel like you can't get five, stop at four, stop at three. 
but but try and cha- okay. try and challenge your strength in that phase, especially since we're we're putting you in a calorie surplus that that'll hopefully add some muscle. Okay, so the surplus um, should I go off like the eighteen to two thousand, like where I'm at now? Yes, yes, yep, two hundred, okay, two hundred to two fifty above that. Okay, and then in terms of my protein, I'm at like one forty. Is that good to stay around, or should I? That's obviously, a, that'll increase a little bit what, too, right? What's yeah. your body weight? Um, I'm 159 right now. Uh, you can keep it at 140. Yeah. You don't good. need to go higher than that. If, okay. it, if it goes up though a little bit, it ain't a big deal either no, too. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah. So if you increase calories and you do it through some protein um, and That's, you go to 150 or 160, that ain't a problem. As long as you feel good, right? So as long as you are digesting the protein okay and feel good, then yeah, don't worry if you go up another 10 or 20 grams. Not a big deal. Okay, gotcha. And you said the bulk for how long? Oh God, I would, I would, I would put you on a bulk for at least like four to six weeks before we interrupt it with like a little bit of a cut. So- Run that run that calorie intake like we're saying for a good four to six weeks and just see how okay. you're responding. Hopefully you feel good. Hopefully you don't see a, a a rapid increase of body fat. Hopefully you feel strength go up and then maybe interrupt it with a short one week cut and then go back to the bulk again. Here you go. Okay, gotcha. All right, awesome. Cool. Thank you, Tess. All right. Thank you guys. I really appreciate you. All you right. got it. Thanks All for right. calling in. That's that's actually the trap I fall into the most often is where I feel good and I progress yeah, yeah. and then I add more. I think yeah. that is the most common for Keep me, adding. at least that's the most common trap. I, I mean, like, I think I actually think that's probably almost everybody. I think that, well, I know a lot of people will stop progressing and add more. I'm pretty good when I stop progressing at figuring out, Oh, I got to back off. But when I'm flying, that's when I throw a bunch of shit on top of what I'm doing. I almost always screw it up. Well, I think that we just, we all are guilty of this of like, it's just such a slow process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and you and I think you hit it perfect by just asking her like like if if you're progressing it's, by the way especially as you get deeper into this journey if I'm progressing I am winning That's <laughs> like, right. I don't care if it's hella incremental it's tiny it's like mm-hmm. if yeah. it's in the because it's very easy to either one plateau or go the other direction That's right mm-hmm. So if I'm moving in the right direction I ain't really fucking with much at all like that we're doing things right if I'm moving in the right direction it's when I plateau or go the opposite direction I really need to course correct. So I think that's the the mistake you're right that people make is they're like, yeah, I've only added a few pounds on the bar or I've only leaned out a little yeah. bit. And it's like, dude, you're doing good. Stay the course. Yeah. I've noticed that people who like you guys the most tend to have trouble progressing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're so happy. <laughs> they're just happy not progressing. <laughs> just happy just, being awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Just kidding. Our next caller is Laura from Washington. Hey, Laura, how can we help you? Hi, guys. Thank you for taking my question. And also, thank you for the podcast. I found you all about a year ago. And absolutely blew the door open for me in so many ways. The only problem has been I find it really hard to listen to any other health or fitness podcast. (laughs) You guys are so entertaining. (laughs) That was the plan, just yeah, so you know. That's it. Well, you did a good job, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. So my first question is not in a judgment way. Truly, I got to week three of phase one of anabolic, and I realized I hadn't done a row in three weeks. And I was just really curious, why are there no rows programmed in the strength phase of anabolic? Hmm. Uh, well, there's lots of rows in the rest of the program. Although in phase one, right. are there really no rows, Doug? Maybe you can pull that up because I'm not sure about that. But nonetheless, uh, the deadlifts are really, really heavy. So you're going to get a lot of mid-back stimulation. And the focus of phase one is building a lot of strength in in three core lifts, right? Or four, right? Your bench press, your overhead press, your squat, and your deadlift. As you move into phase two and phase three, then the routine gets a little bit more nuanced. You're looking at more hypertrophy, you know, pumps, connection to the rest of the body. But that phase one, like we're trying to just get you really, really strong at these fundamental movements, deadlift, squat, overhead press, uh, bench press. Um, Those are the most important aspects of that phase one. Now you wouldn't do phase one forever because it's incomplete if if, if you just did it that way. It's only three weeks long for a reason. And that's because you move into other phases with other exercises that really complete the the, the training uh, philosophy, I guess, or the training program. Barbell rows come in, I think, phase two. Is that they where do. it comes in, Doug? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. Uh, so there are weighted pull-ups, for example, in yes. phase one. 
Um, yeah, everything in phase one is geared towards making you as strong as possible in those core lifts. That's really the main thing. Then you move into phase two, phase three, and then you really get into training, um, you know, the body, breaking it down a little bit more hypertrophy, bodybuilding, you know, and then later on it's more strength stamina. But that first phase is like, we want to get you really strong at these, you know, kind of four main lifts. Have you, have you, Laura, have you heard me talk about my experience of like switching over to just like focusing on deadlifting and letting go of like all the other movements for back, like rows and, and stuff like that. And then my experience of coming back to it. Have you heard me share that before on the podcast? I don't know that I have. So <clears throat> this was really, this was a really interesting phase of my training. It didn't happen until way later. Actually it didn't happen until the three of us all got together. And I went on this kick, which I'm sure you have heard me talk about where I was trying to uh, catch Sal in his deadlift. And, uh, and at this point in my life, I had never really like deadlifted consistently or set a goal of, I want to get really strong with the deadlift. And so this required me deadlifting three times a week. And I really stopped doing a lot of my other back exercises. I let go of pull-ups. I let go of rows. I let go of a lot of dumbbell movements and just everything I did was centered around getting good at the deadlift and complementing that, whether it be deficit deads or doing off of blocks or doing mobility work to work on everything. And the part that was so crazy was after a year of training like that, I remember going back to seated rows that I had been doing my whole life training. And I was stronger at seated rows than I'd ever been in my entire life just from getting really strong oh. at the deadlift. And I share that story on the podcast a lot to, to explain to people and put emphasis on how powerful it is to get to focus on getting really strong at your deadlift and how much carryover it has to all these other movements. And I know, you know, obviously this is, you know, hindsight looking back why when Sal, because Sal created Maps Anabolic without us, you know, he obviously understood this even before I did. And when he programmed that, like that was the thought process is he knows, like if I can get these people to get really strong in their deadlift, these other movements that we traditionally do in the gym are going to, they're going to be stronger. And, and so hopefully you see that from, yeah. from focusing. And, on and to be very clear, if, if, if you did that forever, uh, then yeah, you probably be missing on some balance, right? You start to develop some imbalances. So there's tons of value in doing other movements as well. But the deadlift, especially for a three-week period, which is phase one, has got so much uh, carryover to all these other lifts. There's so much value to it. Now, you'll notice there's pull-ups in phase one, and that's because of all the muscles of the back, the one area where you probably would want to do more direct work when you're just deadlifting is something that targets the lats. Now, you're still activating the lats with the deadlift, and you'll still see some some muscularity there. But you know a pull-up or a pull-down is going to be more direct there. So... That's why phase one kind of looks that way. But again, phase two, phase three, now you're incorporating other yeah. lifts and it becomes much more complete. Yeah. Okay. That answers my question. Thank you. And I did, I hit my first, this is the first time I've ever, I've done performance and aesthetics and then I ran anabolic and I, I, for the first time hit a PR and my deadlift, but it's the first time I've really focused on truly mentally just going for the one or two lifts rather than i've i still always struggle to like not want to at least do four yeah so i did notice a huge strength gain in my deadlifts uh which brings me to my second question and i'll try to make it quick because i know i waste there was a time delay with getting me on here so i've done some research on it and i kind of already found a few answers but i'm really struggling with increasing my squat strength and I really think it has to do with possibly my CNS or me feeling safe. But the squat is one that I really want to get to that place where I feel comfortable just doing one or two reps. But I just mentally hit this block where I put the weight on and I, I can feel my form start to break down. But then when I lower the weight, I can do six, if that makes sense. So yeah. I'm struggling find that so my next question was i was looking i didn't know if possibly incorporating more trap bar deadlifts at a deficit because i think my it's at the very bottom so either i need to do more pause squat i'm not sure i'm pause asking squats. I'm, yeah yeah i think that would be great in two like tension squats i guess is how i would coin these but um you know priming with this with the dumpy squat which is where you kind of push 
up with yeah. with a yeah with a stick um, in order to kind of direct a lot of that muscular tension to to feel like uh, you know you're you're more supported and you're getting a louder signal out of your CNS. I think really like slowing down, you know, maybe not maybe taking some of the weight off and, and because obviously, you know, you're, you're more comfortable with that right now. And that's like something that you got to kind of work through, but to be able to stay a little bit longer at the bottom of that squat and really reinforce that by squeezing and intentionally, um, you know, taking that time to, uh, to, to squeeze as much tension out of the muscles as you possibly can. And then, um, you know, going through reps and cycles of that, I think is gonna be really helpful. So I have, I have two things I, I like, and I actually do like your, your trap bar deadlift idea. I mean, I think that there's, there's, especially when it's like a psychological thing of just like getting comfortable with putting that much weight and then coming out of the hole at the bottom. So, so getting strong, because you probably feel safer loading the trap yeah. bar even more. So I yeah. do, I do like that idea. I also like this. If you have this ability, if you have a, a squat rack where you can put safety bars up, I would put them at right where my the bottom of my squat is and actually load the bar even heavier than what you've ever done mm. and actually take the bar down as slow as you can and then set it down and then get out from underneath okay. it. This is going to take a little bit of effort. It would be ideal if you were with another person who could help you re-rack and do it. But what that will do, you talk about it being, you know, you, you might be on the right track of this being a CNS thing of you just learning to control that much weight and get over the psychological hurdle of, oh my God, this is scary. So you load that and you know the safety bars are at the bottom are going to catch you there. So your goal is to just slowly go down into the hole as slow as you can and then let, let it set on the safety bar, then climb out underneath it, strip the weights off, set it up again, give yourself some rest, do it again and get yourself comfortable. I remember this I remember this exact feeling of when I really first got, got in squatting. I was lifting with these guys that were power lifters and at that point in my life, like squatting 135 was actually really heavy. So I'm, I'm like 17, 18 years old at this time. And these guys put 225 on there. Like it was so beyond. And I was like scared to death. I'm like, I don't want to do this. I can't even get close to this. Why am I doing this? He's like, I just want you to feel the weight. And I remember after doing that, how quickly my strength went up because they were right. Like it was this, my, my body then got comfortable with just stabilizing that much weight. So then when I actually went to 185, which was less than what they put on my back, all of a sudden it didn't feel so scary anymore because I had I had stretched myself that way. Now I had the support of them squatting, holding me, but if I had to do it on my own, I would do it the way I just told you. Yeah, I like that. I mean, too, th these are a little bit more advanced moves, but if you did have access to rubber bands as well to put uh, for an assistance, uh, so that way too, you get that sort of elastic energy help on the weight. Uh, at the very bottom, obviously, the, it increases the help as you go lower, but at least that way you could stack up to Adam's point of like being able to feel heavier weight at the top. It really will help to kind of get your body acclimated to that. Yeah. What's going to give you the most bang for your buck right now, honestly, um, is the pause squats. Yeah. Staying tight. Uh, box squats. Sit on a box. Pause on the on the box. Tighten up and then stand back up. You know, the heavy negatives that Adam said is good too. That'll make you really sore though. And that's uh can be a bit scary for somebody. But if you just want to do something right now, that's not gonna take a lot of skill. Pause with the weight that you can handle and hold uh -huh. it at the bottom for five seconds. Yep. Uh that by itself, that alone will 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 help you out. Thank you. I appreciate it. I I listened recently and I know there was a little back and forth. There was a few ladies arguing about how they didn't feel like there was enough legs in some of these programs. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I was finding myself not on purpose, but getting to that point where I was like, man, I don't feel like I hit my legs, but I truly believe, especially in the strength, it's because I never pushed myself to that level and I was really struggling. So, yeah. mm -hmm. really doing, you know, six and I'm like, man, I know I can do more mentally. I think because I didn't feel like I was succeeding, I was like, I still got to do something else for my legs because I didn't, you know. I, did, I wouldn't be successful at it. So I think that's absolutely great advice. I will take all of it and I will continue to put the hard work in. And I appreciate you guys having me on today. Yeah. Well, Thank Laura, Laura real, real quick, when you notice the strength gains in uh, MAPS Anabolic, I'm going to make a guess that your deadlift and squat made bigger gains in your overhead press and your bench press, probably significantly. Yes, absolutely. I, I am... 
uh, recovering a little bit from an AC joint. I didn't realize for so many years I was doing bench press, not totally. Anyways, long story short. So yes, my deadlifts and my squats absolutely went up. Yeah. And the, here's the irony. People who say that they're, oh, if they feel like it's more upper body, you look at the strength gains they're making the squat and the deadlift blows away <laughs> the gains that they made in some of those other lifts. So yeah. it is a, it is a hip dominant program. And so when people say that it's, yeah. I, yeah, they don't understand that there's biceps, triceps, delts, you know, traps, chest, and then legs that say like quads, hams, calves, you know, and then some glute stuff. So it's just less mm -hmm. muscles, bigger gross motor movements. And uh, it's a yeah. very, very equal program when it comes to training the body. But anyway, thanks for yeah, calling I in. love it. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I, gained, I think I gained almost two pounds of muscle in the last month and a half. So nice. I was blown away. And this is after weightlifting for seven years. So Excellent. I was, I was shocked. Hell yeah. so, That's awesome. Thank Laura. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. So thank you guys very much. You thank got you. It. Dude, I'm so glad she said that right now. Yeah. Because that's that why I asked that. Because we get that sometimes and especially for yeah, women. And she fight. hit on the head exactly the 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 women that have made those comments is if you were to push yourself on those squat days and on those deadlifts, I promise you your body will definitely adapt, will definitely grow. You do not need technically any more exercises in the routine it's that you haven't been able to push yourself on on yeah. those exercises yeah. Yeah, well it, she's got the right mentality too it's like knowing that um it's a little bit of uncertainty there for her as she wants to load has to put the work in now to train the body to uh get in that mindset to be able to support the joints and have her feel like this is going to be uh you know a good lift for her listen it was just like the last caller and i was giving the advice that you know, like I just like I could get Katrina has been lifting for over 10, 15 years. And I still have to remind her this. It's just it, my, my female clients uh, are always going to lean on the safer side and they're going to control mm -hmm. the way, which there's lots of benefits to that. Right. They're for mechanics. They're, they, they tend to be better. But then that's the, the the downfall is to get them to to really push the limits of like stretching themselves with weight and then giving them that freedom of like just because the program calls for five. It doesn't mean that you can't load the bar up. And then when you're at rep three, go, oh, shit, I might not get to five. So you stop yep. at three. There's nothing wrong with that. But th that's how I have to talk to Katrina all the time is like, listen, I want you to load the bar as if you don't have to get to five. Don't think that you have to get to five. Load the bar with more weight than you're ever used to. And then if you don't think you can get to five, then stop at three or four. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. I do blame the the workouts for women yes. you know, that you see online where there's like you know, 50 different leg exercises. Yes. But Jump lunges yeah, and side lunges. Yeah, but 40 of them are these stupid, silly, dumb, pointless. We, yeah, worthless exercises. Like that's the problem. Like, oh, this is way less legs than I'm used to. And, and, and that's what yeah. it is. Well, watch what happens. You're right. And they're, and they're used to that. Their legs burn. Burn. My yeah. legs burn when I yeah. do this, or they get this pump because all you're doing is pumping fluid into them and stuff like that. And so they think that it's a better leg workout. It's like, nah, no, that's not how it works. Our next caller is Lila from California. Lila, how can we help you? Hi, it's crazy to be here, you guys. Uh -huh. um, thank you so much for having me. You got it. Thanks I've for been listening. Me. I've been listening to you guys since I was 16. I'm 20 now. Um, and it was yes. right when I started college. I'm about to graduate on Friday, actually. So you guys have been with me in my little AirPods working out um, oh, for yeah. four years. Congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. Um, okay. So a little bit about my background. Um, since I started listening to you guys, I've been training hypertrophy for um, pretty consistently for those four years. Um, I never really focused on my physique, just the mental um, benefits of it and just how much fun it was. Um, and so I totally worked that into routine. And honestly, I can't imagine living without it. Um, because I never really focused on physique or any kind of nutrition, I never made that much progress. And, um, I stayed pretty lean, um, those four years and, um, but I, but I just had fun with it. And so the past few months I've gained some weight and I feel so much better in my body, but I still didn't really make that much progress with my lifts and, um, and the weights that I've been using or grow that much muscle. And so, um, then I went on a run and then two days later decided to sign up for a half marathon just because, um, why not? Um, and I'm, I'm kind of hardcore. And so I did this trail run, this epic trail run up North in um, Marin and it came down across the golden gate bridge. And since then I've been running a lot and I've noticed that my legs have like grown so much more than they ever have in the hypertrophy. And I'm just wondering your take on that. 
Um, and then I also notice on my long runs, I can do about 15 miles now. Um, my legs give out faster than my cardio endurance. And like, I can have a conversation at like mile 11. Um, but my legs give out more. And because I've had the strength background, I know it isn't necessarily because my legs aren't strong. So I'm just wondering your take on this. Wow. Okay. So hold on a second. Are you an athlete? Do you play any sports or is this just all working out on your own type of stuff? I, I grew up, um, like playing soccer and softball, but mostly just working out. Okay. Are you, are your parents athletes? No. Yeah. Cause okay. So people who's build leg muscles doing long distance running have really, really, in my experience, have really crazy muscle building genetics. Where are you getting the muscle in your legs mostly? Is it mostly in your calves or in quads? Or um, it all over? Quads and calves. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So quads and calves is typically we'll see. And I've trained women like this. Well, they'll come to me and all they do is long distance running and they got these like big ball calves and then quads, but they tend to have issues with their hamstrings and glutes. Um, and that's where we tend to see the imbalance. You probably have some really, really crazy muscle building genetics. And I'm assuming with your weight training, your programming might not have been super great. So we'd want to look at that. But let me ask you right now, what are your goals right now? Are you trying to get better at the marathon running or do you want to just build muscle and strength or like what's the, what are your ultimate goals here? So for a while it's been, um, just kind of building muscle and strength, but, um, I'm about to like graduate college and I have a job, um, that I'm probably going to be spending like 70, 80 hours a week working, um, pretty sedentary. So, um, I'm kind of trying to like adjust my goals based on just thing overall fit. Um, and you know, keep my metabolism going and still having fun with training. Okay. Well, what, what do you find most fun right now then? Let's talk about that. Oh, um, like running, um, and biking. Okay. Maps cardio. Yeah, wait. yeah. I'm going to send you maps cardio. This is a, a, their strength training is involved, but it's a okay. stamina endurance based workout program. And it leaves room for activities that you enjoy doing things like running, biking. It sounds to me like you like just to be active and it also yeah. sounds to me that you like to be active outside. I know you live in San Francisco, so you're in the Bay Area, so you have a lot of access to outdoor trails and great places to right. run, and the weather's typically pretty pleasant. I think MAPS Cardio would be the absolute perfect program for you, so I'm going to send that over to you because I think, I think that'll be something that you enjoy. Um, but because I, look, your soccer background, you're probably a really fast sprinter. The mm -hmm. fact that you build muscle on your legs when you do a lot of running – like I can, that tells me that you got some muscle building genetics there that you haven't really tapped into, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Very cool. That's, yeah. That's so interesting just because I spent so much time weight training and, you know, I got upper body, I got lean, but I never like grew muscle size. Well, a lot of that's going to depend on diet, but also programming. Yeah. Too. Programming. Mm -hmm. and, and you might, like, I've worked with people like this and they do well with frequent stimulation, frequent stimulation, frequent. And so quads and calves is where if you get any hypertrophy from running, that's where you'll get it. Now, a lot of people won't get any hypertrophy from running, maybe a little bit if they're sedentary and they start running. But most mm -hmm. people, if they go from lifting to running, they'll lose. But some people who've got this, uh, this, these type of genetics, that frequent stimulation, just frequent. So, you know, I think of like a full body three day a week routine, strength training, I think trigger sessions, I think you know, double split bodybuilding routines where the intensity is modified may be something that you respond really well to. Also keep mm. also keep in mind, okay, you you weren't running this much before. You were you were already somebody who were were relatively lean already. You start running like crazy. You could have also leaned out. And when you lean out, it looks like you build muscle. I mean, I'll never forget the first time that I got really shredded. And I lost like 20 pounds and everybody was like, dude, you're jacked. You put on like all this mm -hmm. muscle. And it's like, no, I didn't. I actually just, yeah. all I did was lean out and I got rid of body fat. Now you see my muscle definition. And so it looks like I built these legs That's or true. built these shoulders. That's so true. keep that in mind too. So Sal's right. There, there, there are anomalies of people that do run and they actually do see some quad and cap, but then you also weren't running like that before. And now you're running a ton. You easily mm -hmm. could have leaned out and now you're seeing the definition in your quads and your calves like you've never seen before. And so it, it looks like, oh shit, I built all this muscle. When in re reality, the muscle was there. You just revealed it. Yeah. Yeah. I, That's Go ahead, Lila. Sorry. No, I was going to say that's interesting because the scale weight has definitely gone up and my, my pants have gotten tighter. Oh, oh, well, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My wife is like this. So when I met my wife, she did some strength training, but it was like cardio with weights, but mm -hmm. she had a history of, of distance running and her calves okay. and quads Good. were jacked. Just calves and quads were, and my, my wife has got, she's got bodybuilder genetics much more than I do. 
And frequent stimulation is what makes her grow. So if she just right. did a lot of anything on a daily basis, that muscle tends to, to grow. So, you know, like I said, it's not common, um, but I, like, I think MAPS cardio you like. I think after MAPS cardio, if you really want to have fun with the bodybuilding style of training, I th I'd say go for MAPS aesthetic and see what happens. I also mm. think, too, like I've seen this with some athletes I've trained as well as this like sort of phenomenon with that. But uh, in my experience, I've seen that uh, whatever it was that they trained for a lot when they were younger, um, you know, that was something that it was almost like a muscle memory effect oh, to it point. Yeah, good point. to where like they started to stimulate the muscle in that regard. And then they saw those type of uh, the muscles just responded because it was something that, you know, it hadn't uh, been put to use for in a long time. So I don't know if that, you know, plays a factor in what you're going through, but I have seen that phenomenon. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if I, if I were to guess that, you know, what kind of strength training would make you, make you build, it would probably be 15 to 20 reps. Uh, it would probably be some incorporation of supersets. Dude, strong would, and be, it would be strong would be the program. Yeah. It's so posterior chain yeah. heavy and she's already not like yeah. glute ham dominant. And like, I think that would be a, an yeah. awesome follow-up. But I, I, think, I think for fun and you enjoy it and you and you feel, you, you, you know, kind of you feel healthy, you look healthy from looking at you. I think you would enjoy MAPS cardio because it's going to give you all yeah, the Yeah, cardio right now. Fun. And then I would like to mm. see strong. So, so I have a question because you mentioned like getting ready to go when you, when you start working these 70 yeah. hour work weeks, are, is, are you maintaining the running or is that going to go? Um, I hope so. Okay. I yeah. hope so on weekends and, um, getting up at like, I don't know, uh, six in the that, morning. Maps, going out. Maps cardio is going to be perfect. Yeah. She's young too. She doesn't have any other responsibilities yeah. besides, <laughs> besides, I mean, seriously, when you're, when you're young, 80 hours a week, you still got plenty of time to do other shit. Yeah. Maps cardio is perfect for you right yeah. now. I think it's a great routine. Yeah. What yeah. field, what field are you going to be working out of curiosity? Um, I'm going to be going to private equity. So finance. What? Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. Very, Very cool. Yeah. I love hearing you guys talk about investments. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Cool. You just became cooler. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for following the show, Lila. I love, I love hearing about yeah. the fact that you followed us since you were 16 till now. Yeah, um, very cool. Seriously. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. No, thank you guys so much. You got it. Yeah, take care. You got right. it. Yeah, I, I. it's super rare, but I've definitely run into people super rare. where they build doing shit that's not supposed to make you build. And she definitely did. Yeah. If she said that her, her pants got tighter and the scale went up. Now, the other factor I've here is diet. Like jumping rope. You yeah. Know? Like, yes. I've seen that with athletes and their calves just yeah. explode in their quads. But the other part, and by the way, if any muscles will grow from high, high, high reps, lots and lots of frequent stimulation, it's calves and quads. They right. tend to be the body parts that tend to do Those that. Those the ones. They do. Nonetheless, here's the other factor is diet. And sometimes what happens when people start to really burn a lot of calories through activities, their appetite goes through the roof mm. and they don't notice necessarily that they've eaten yeah. 600 more calories a day. So that's the other factor too. Sure. Like she could have been strength training, but could have been under eating and then finally fed herself. And then all that like back pressure of muscle, you know, muscles wanting to build now finally gets to, you know, come to fruition. I think that's actually a really good point, Sal, especially when you talk about a little hundred pound female like this, because yep. there's a good chance she wasn't even getting adequate protein that's to right. build good muscle. Now she's eating a good amount of calories and probably hitting protein intake and then just the stimulus alone. And maybe just Justin's point, this is an area, she was a soccer player before. The muscles went, oh, that's what we've been yeah, looking I for. This. Yeah, fed her, stimulated, and she grew. So that's very much so a possibility. Totally. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can only find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me, for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 